Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to present a couple of more problems which uh, I can conditionally call final problems on uh, 3D geometry, um, solid geometry. Um, they are not very difficult at all. Um, one of them seems to be a little bit more difficult, but it's just it just seems to be. It's not really. Um, however, um, I would like also to pay some attention to to be a little bit more rigorous in um, in whatever the calculations are required for this particular for these particular uh, problems. Okay, the problem number one, which looks actually very easy, um, you have a cone. right circular cone, which means the base is uh, a circle and the apex projects to uh, the center of this circle. So it's on the perpendicular to the plane where the base is and the perpendicular uh, goes through the center of a, of, of, of a, of a circle. Now. Now we have a, uh, a sphere which is uh, inscribed into this cone. Now, considering you know the parameters of the cone, radius of uh, the base and the altitude, the height of the cone, you have to determine the radius of inscribed sphere. Now, <coughs> first of all, let me say something very simple, which will lead us to a solution, and then we will think about um, how to make it a little bit more rigorous. So the simple thing is that everything seems to be quite symmetrical, so if I will cut with a plane uh, from the apex of the cone, uh, through the uh, uh, the axis, through this uh, altitude of the cone, um, in the section I will have, well, the cones section would be a triangle, which goes through the center of uh, this circle as the base, and um, the section of the sphere would be a circle which is inscribed into this triangle. Now, what do I know about this circle? Well, I have to determine its radius, but I do know that the height is h. Now, this is uh, isosceles <coughs> uh, triangle, and this half of the base of this triangle is R. That's what I know. How can I find the radius of an inscribed circle in this case? Let's call it R. Well, there are probably many ways. I personally prefer the following. I will connect the center of an inscribed circle with um, vertices of a triangle. Now I can consider the uh, triangle's area being on one hand half of the base times h, which is rh, right? On another hand, I can consider this triangle as consisting of three triangles. This one, this one, and this one. Now, each of these triangles have the altitude equal to radius of an inscribed circle. So, the area of this triangle is um, the product of this length times r, then th this triangle is this length times r, and uh, this triangle has this length times r. So all of them have the same um, altitude. So if I will add them together, 
I will have the perimeter um, which should be divided by 2 because triangle area is half of the base times altitude. So it should be equal to one half of the perimeter of this triangle times r. Question is what's the perimeter? Well, perimeter is simple because if this is r, this is h, so this is the Pythagorean theorem square root of r square plus h square and there are two of them this side and this side and then there is a 2r so 2 this plus 2 this that's a perimeter now if you will substitute it here uh, this is one half so this 2 will go so you will have rh equals to uh, 2 r right uh, equals to r plus square root of r square plus h square <coughs> times r. So r is equal to r h divided by r plus square root of r square plus h square. So that's the answer. And it's relatively simple to get it. Now, what have I missed? Well, obviously I missed whatever I did from the very beginning, like I said, okay, it's obvious if we will make a section, we will get something like this. So that actually should be proven. And that's also part of the problem. So how can I prove that all these manipulations are lawful? And I indeed will have this picture if I will um, cut with a plane my cone um, along its uh, altitude. Okay. <coughs> First of all, again, let me repeat that this is a right circular cone, which means this is a circle and the apex is on the perpendicular to the plane uh, through its center. All right. Now, how can I prove that if I will, if I will just cut the plane, I will get exactly this? Well, first of all, let's prove that the center of a sphere is on this altitude. How can I prove that? Well, let's just take the center of a sphere it's somewhere here. Now, um, first of all, I was talking about this during the previous discussion of the previous problem, previous lecture. What is a tangential, um, what is the tangency between the sphere and a surface of a cone. Well, I have defined it as the following. If my sphere is tangential to every generatrix which connects apex of a cone with a, uh, with a point on, uh, on a circle which is its base, so the circle uh, so the sphere should be tangential to each point, which means it should have only one common point with each of them. So the tangential curve, if you wish, all the points where each particular um, generatrix is touching the sphere, that, that's what it is. And I was actually talking about this being a circle and um, uh, all these points are lying in the same plane. So let me just repeat a little bit what, what the logic was behind it. So if this is the center, what I can say, so uh, let, let's just take any two uh, uh, generatrices. So if I will connect my center to this and to this, now I was also talking during the previous lecture that the radius from uh, the center of a sphere to a point of tangency with a line is perpendicular to this line. Um, because it's the shortest distance, everything else is outside of a sphere and only this point is on the sphere, right? So this is the shortest, so it's a perpendicular. If it's a perpendicular, then if I will take these two points of tangency to two different um, uh, generatrices, uh, obviously, I will have triangle SOA and SOB um, congruent to each other because these two are radiuses, OA and OB, and a, uh, OA is equal to OB, 
because it's radius of a sphere. And hypotenuse SO is common between these two triangles, right? So they are congruent, which means the angles are the same. So it looks like the angle between any generatrix and this particular uh, line which connects um, apex with the center of a sphere is the same, right? Well, um, if that is true, then um, it should be obvious, well, the same, the same property actually has the uh, altitude of a cone. So the angle between the altitude and any generatrix is the same. Now, from these two circumstances, that angle between SO and any generatrix, as well as angle between the altitude of the cone with any generatrix, these angles are the same, actually follows, and it's probably very easy to, to do, I just don't want to spend time on this, that O should belong to this altitude. So the center of a sphere is supposed to be on the altitude. Just because SO has equal angles with, H, with each generatrix, right? Okay. Um, well, I'm just wondering how it can be done. Actually, it's very easy. Um, if you connect S and O, it doesn't really matter whether it goes to the center or not. But look at this. Um, consider these two points, C and D. <coughs> so, the same two um, generators I was using before, SB goes to SC and SA goes to SD, right? Now, all generatrices of the cone are of the same length. That's obvious because, again, you can consider tri uh, uh, right triangle. So, any generatrix has the same length because all these catheters are, are the same and this catheter is uh, common for all these triangles. And obviously, they are all uh, right triangles because the altitude is perpendicular to the cone, right? So, all generatrices have the same lengths, right? Now, so SC and SB, uh, sorry, SD are the same lengths. Now, angles between um, generatrix, let's say, SC and the line which goes through the center, we have already proven that this is the same, right? Doesn't really uh, depend on, on the generatrix. So, we have uh, a side, we have an angle and another side. So the triangles are equal, which means if we will put this letter M where SO hits the plane uh, at the base. So CM and DM should be the same because triangles um, SCM and SDM are congruent by side, angle, side. So this is the center. So that's, that's how it probably completes the proof that my uh, uh, sphere is um, centered on, on the altitude. And since it's centered on the altitude and it's also touching the, the plane of the base, which means the radius is perpendicular, but OM is perpendicular because it belongs to altitude. So, the, the point of uh, uh, tangency between the sphere and the base is exactly the center of a, of a base. Okay, now when everything is done, what we do is we have any diameter SD and point S, and then we cut with a plane SCD. Now we have this. Now, since this plane goes through this point, which is common point, actually, for perpendicular from S to the plane and from S to the center of a sphere, because the center lies on the, uh, on the altitude, right? So, this um, plane contains the center of a sphere. So, point O here. Now, SC and SD are two generatrices, as we have already uh, known uh, are of equal lengths, so it's an isosceles triangle. Now, uh, these actually would be points B and C, and uh, um, obviously 
this circle is supposed to be tangential to any line because if it's not then basically there is no common points between a sphere and these A and B so it should be at least one but it cannot be more than one because if the, cer if the circle contains two points of intersection then the sphere would contain two points of intersection uh, with uh, a generatrix, this and this. And this is not the case, because it's tangential. So that's why we have a circle which is inscribed into a triangle. So all these words are actually necessary if you want to do the calculations which I did very quickly in the beginning, um, more or less you know, lawful and based on some real logic rather than just intuition. And intuition was perfectly fine. That's actually how things are done in many cases in, in, in science. First, you intuitively feel that it should be something like this. And then your calculations are easy. And then you think about how to, um, uh, uh, somehow to support your calculations with, with proof that this is really correct. All right, next problem. Okay, next problem. Okay, you have a cylinder. And you have a triangle which is kind of inscribed into this cylinder in the following way. Two points of this triangle are on a base and one point on a side. So let's connect it. Let's go A, B and C. Now, what I know about this triangle that number one is isosceles, AB is equal to AC. Number two, I know that BC is equal to six. Now, this is a perpendicular, this is isosceles triangle, and this is the perpendicular to the base, AD. Uh, which is median and uh, angle bisector and an altitude, right? So AD is equal to 2. I also know that angle beta between the plane ABC and the base is 30 degrees. That's what I know. Now, what do I have to define? I have to find out the radius of a cylinder. I have to find out the radius of a cylinder. Okay. Now, here is the center of a cylinder. Now, the base is a circle, right? So, if from a center I drop a perpendicular to a chord, BC, it will divide this chord in half, right? So D is, since this is an isosceles triangle, point D is also middle of the BC, since AG is perpendicular to BC. So this OD is perpendicular to BC, right? Now, so let's continue it further. Let's call it E. Now, what I am actually stating right now that angle A D E is actually this angle beta, which is 30 degrees. Why? Well, if you remember how I defined the angle between two planes, I actually defined it as <coughs> an angle between two perpendiculars within each plane to a line of their intersection. So, now I know actually a lot about this. Um, now, what happens 
if I drop a perpendicular, you know what, I didn't really write it correctly. Let me just make my picture slightly more plausible. The point would be somewhere here on the surface. That's A. That's on the front part of the cylinder. What I would like to say is the following, that if I will drop a perpendicular from point A, now this is a right circular cylinder, I didn't say it, but I kind of presume it, so it would be a generatrix, right, and it would be down to, I'm stating that this will hit exactly the point E. Well, why? Let's just think about it. How can I prove it? Well, um, let's just leave it alone and continue with calculations and then we will return to this point um, the same way as I did in the previous problem. It's kind of obvious that since these two are equal, AB and AC, then if I put the perpendicular down, it should be in the middle of B and C, middle of the projections, right? Because this is an isosceles triangle. Forget about cylinder, forget about everything else. It's just between the plane ABC and the base plane. If you have this type of an isosceles triangle and I drop down perpendicular, it should actually hit the perpendicular from C from, from E to, to, to this intersection should actually hit the middle of it. But we will prove it later on. Now, considering I have proven that, what I can say right now about this particular problem. Well, here it is. I have a circle, let's just consider the bottom of this, a circle. What do I know about this? I know that there is a chord, BC, and I know its length. What I don't know is, well, I have to determine radius, right? But I uh, probably can, can do it by uh, calculating separately this particular distance, OD, and GE separately. How can I do it? Well, what do I know about this? Well, I know that this angle is 30 degrees. And I know AD. Now, ADE is the right triangle. I know hypotenuse AD, which is equal to 2. So what exactly is my DE? Let's just think about it. So if I have a hypotenuse, and it's 2, and this is 30 degrees, well, it doesn't look like 30 degrees, but... Okay, I'll make it 30 degrees. Okay, this is 30 degrees, this is 2. Now, what is this length? Well, remember, this is 1, right? Because it's across uh, the 30 degrees, so it's half of the hypotenuse. So this is uh, square root of 3, right? 4 minus 1, yes. So I know DE, so this piece is square root of 3. Now, BC is 6, so this is 3, and this is 3, right? So, what can I say about the radius of this particular uh, circle? Well, it's kind of... Um, okay, if you will connect these, you consider this is R, right? and OE is also R. So on one hand, OG is equal square root of R square minus R square minus 3 square, right? Minus 9. On another hand, OG is equal R minus square root of 3. So here we have an equation r square minus 9 is uh, equal to r minus square root of 3 square, right? I squared both sides. 
now which is which is what r square minus 9 is equal to r square minus 2 r uh, square root of 3 uh, plus 3 right r is out so it's 2r square root of 3 equals 12 r square root of 3 is equal to 6 r is equal to 6 divided by square root of 3 well let's simplify it we'll multiply by square root of 3 both sides now square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3 6 divided by 3 is 2 so it's 2 square root of 3 All right. so that's the answer we have found what our actually radius actually is but let's go back and find out how to make this uh, assumption that A projects to this E which lies in the same radius as OG so that's the case alright so um, let's just forget about uh, the cylinder, we don't really need it well, what we do need is the following so, if I will connect this and this and consider triangles ACE and ABE now, what can I say about these triangles? both are right triangles because AE is perpendicular to the plane right? and that's why it's perpendicular to any line in the plane now the AE catheters is common now AB and AC are equal by condition of this problem I said the triangle ABC is isosceles, right? so I have a hypotenuse and the catheters uh, which means that these two triangles are um, congruent which means that BE equals CE BE equals CE which means that BCE is the right the, the isosceles triangle right and since it's isosceles triangle a perpendicular from E to BC also goes exactly into the center so OG is perpendicular goes to the center of BC and ED also perpendicular and it also goes to the center which means it's one line so the radius from A uh, through G hits exactly the point of projection of A so that basically that basically completes uh, the, the, the proof of whatever we have done is correct because otherwise we can count only on our intuition and again I would like to point your attention to this particular fact that first we kind of based on intuition try to solve the problem and then I have returned and uh, intuitively obvious things um, uh, proved relatively rigor r rigorously alright um, as usually I suggest you to go through all these uh, proofs and calculations just by yourself go to the unisor.com and uh, everything is in there these problems are presented with answers so do it and uh, you will feel satisfaction alright thank you very much and good luck